Hello again, everyone. Welcome to OE Tech Made Easy. Um, today we'll be continuing from where we stopped in the last video by treating the second question in our surface development problems. In this question, we have an hexagonal prism. You can see the plan and the incomplete front elevation that I have on my paper. From this now, we are asked to develop the surface of this prism showing the cuts and the curve from this seam. The seam now is at the right hand side. If you remember in the previous video, we had our seam at the left hand side, but now we have the seam at the right hand side. So we are going to be developing this prism soon. Okay, now from our question, I have drawn the plan of the hexagonal prism and the next step is to draw the front elevation as given to us in the question. Now the front elevation is going to look something like this, where you have this face here in front and two other faces at the side. But from our question, you can see that it's truncated at some angles and also beneath it, you can see the radius of 50 that cuts the hexagonal prism. We are also going to, we are going to be replicating that in a front elevation here. And take note that the height of the prism is 88 millimeters long. We are also going to be taking note of that, which I have done in my own drawing by offsetting 88 millimeters from this bottom line here to the top. So now we want to produce the front elevation given to us in our question on my paper here. And to do that, we are taking note of a few things. First is the 30 degree angle from the left hand side of the hexagonal prism and also the 45 degree angle from the right hand side of the hexagonal prism to the center line. Also take note that at the bottom of the hexagonal prism there is an arc of radius 50 millimeters which I have here on my compass. Um, to draw that arc, that's what I'm going to be doing first. I'll put my compass point here which is the center point of the arc I'm going to draw and draw an arc just beneath the front elevation of the hexagonal prism. I also put it at the other extreme, draw an arc to cross the first one, 50 degrees, 50 millimeters rather. So now we have both arc cross each other, that will be the center point for the 50 millimeters arc. So now I have that and I'm just going to start from here and draw my arc to the other side. Um, you can erase the extensions if you have any in your drawing. Now we have made the arc of radius 15 millimeters. The next thing to do is to draw the line at an angle as given to us in the question. Now that I've drawn my arc, the next thing I'm going to be doing is to draw the line inclined 30 degrees to the horizontal. That's because I will need the line there to also draw the 45 degree line since they are both meeting at the center point of the hexagonal prism. Now to draw that, I'm going to be using my 30 degree set square which I'm going to be placing around here to align with the top and drawing the lines with the center points. From that center point, I'm going to be using my 45 degree set square to complete the line to the other side of the hexagonal prism. Now that I've completed the front elevation as given to us in the question, the next thing to do is to create my development plane. And I'm going to be doing that on the right side of the front elevation as in the previous video that the previous question we treated. Now, to do that, I also have to note the length of each side of my hexagonal prism. Um, if you see in the question, we are given a prism of 64 millimeters across flats. That means the length from the top flat side to the bottom flat side or any opposite flat side should be 64 millimeters across 
Now, having done that, I have to measure the length of each side of the hexagonal prism. And as you can see here now, that gives me 3.7 centimeters, which is 37 millimeters. You can also check other sides to verify if your answer, if your length of side is actually consistent. Now I have 3.7 centimeters or 37 millimeters on each side of my hexagonal prism. I'm going to be creating a rectangle here and I'm going to divide that rectangle into six parts having 3.7 centimeters in breadth. So now I have my development plane which shows the hexagonal prism when it's opened and a perfect example of that is from our model here as you can see so you have six different parts one two three four five six just like we have here on our development plane so the next step to do is to label each edge of the hexagonal prism from one through to six and to cut the hexagonal prism as given to us in the question to give us a shape which we are going to represent on our development plane and the next thing i'm going to be doing now is to label the edges or the parts of my hexagonal prism now if you notice in the question we have this right side called the seam or labeled the seam that means i'm going to be unwrapping this solid shape from the right side in the previous question we treated we had the seam to be on our left side and we started our labeling from that side but in this question we are going to start labeling from the right side because that's the seam and that's where you are unwrapping from so that means on my plan here i'm going to be calling this side one and i'm going to be having two right here in front going clockwise this is going to be three here four five here and six on this part okay now following the projections upward i'm also going to label the sides as they are shown on the plan i'm going to label them on the front elevation so that means this point here is going to be point one this is going to be two and six here i have three and five and here i have my number four so having done this i also have to label them here calling this one two three four five and six okay so the next thing i'm going to do now is to trace or project lines from the points where we cut to my surface my development plane so i'm going to be projecting this point right here i'm also going to be projecting this point i'm going to project it this point but since they pass through the same line it's just going to be one line taking the two points um as you can see now i have projected lines from each point that was cut off in the hexagonal prism i have from point one from point two and six which is behind from the midpoints of this face we can see in our front elevation from points three and five and from points four now because of this point has no label we have to represent it on our surface development plane here and to do that we have to note which face has this point on it that's this center line which is um the face between the face two and three or let me say the face that holds points two and three and also five and six so that means in my development plane here i'm going to create a line to bisect it between two and three and also between five and six to represent this point so doing that now i'll take the distance between both of them which is that seven millimeters and divide by two Okay, now I've drawn the center lines on the faces that hold the points 2 and 3 and 5 and 6 as we have here in the front elevation. Now if you also notice I created an extra face here because I wasn't going to be using this face. That's, um, I did that because of I labeled 1 to be on this line, 2, 3, 4. So line 6 and remember line 6 
has a face that goes back to one that's why i have this extra part here so i won't be using any of these parts so now the next step is to mark off points on this development plane as we have in the front elevation so to do that i'm going to start from point one so this is where i have for point one and i'm going to mark it here on my one and also at the end of the drawing which marks the beginning and the end of the unwrapping of the solid shape now the next one is point two and six also note that this falls under point two and six so i'm going to be marking off from this point and this point on the lines that are labeled two and six so for two i have this here and i have this here for point six also i'll be doing the same thing right here and right here now for this point here on the mid line that's the center line of this face i'm going to be marking off that is from here and also from here then i move to the next one which is point three five or line three five and that also has two points here and here so i'm going to my line three five this is line three here and also here my line five i'll be doing the same thing there too now for point four point four goes from top to bottom so that's this and this now point one also goes down to the bottom so i should note that right here and right here so now i have all the points so um, i'm almost done with all the points now except for um from the bottom side here we also have a point that touches the center line at the bottom which is between two and three and also between five and six so i'm going to be marking off that point so we can have we have all the points at the top and we have the ones for the bottom at the top we have one two and six the center line of the face between two and three and also five and six we have the points for three and five and for four which you can see all of them here we also have for the bottom parts the points that make the core from one two three four coming back five and six we also have the line for that core here which goes all the way so the next thing to do is to join the points to bring out the developed shape of a hexagonal prism i'm going to be doing that now Um, you can see now that we have cut a model to fit the description given to us in the question. Um, the cuts the 30 degree to the horizontal down to the center line, the 45 degree and the curve we have at the bottom of the hexagonal prism. Now I'm going to unwrap this prism to show the true shape of what we should expect when we develop this. Okay, so this is what you get when you unwrap this solid um truncated hexagonal prism now you can see the midpoint line we have from face two between two and three and also between five and six that midpoint we have here we have the 30 degree line and the 45 degree line um intersecting also you can see the curves we have as shown that run from one to four and back to one we also have that here so doing a quick recap of what we have drawn um remember we first produced the plan 64 millimeters across flats which means opposite flats side are 64 millimeters between them we also projected lines from the edges upwards to create a front elevation as given to us in the question we have a 30 degree line from here to the center line of 
between phase um, two and three. We also have another line, 45 degrees to this vertical line we have here. And we have a curve 50 millimeters or an arc 50 millimeters. Um, we also projected lines off the points as they touch the edges of each side. Projecting the lines onto this plane, we also marked off points corresponding to the face according to our label and marking of those points we join the points together you can see the curve we have underneath both of them and we also have the lines upwards now if you fold this drawing to give you an hexagonal prism you are going to get this front elevation that is what surface development is all about unwrapping solid objects or solid shapes to give you a 2d representation of what it's going to be um, thank you very much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Bye.